All right, so this is a quick video tutorial about relog detectors. So in a single player world, for some reason, Frostwalker boots on an armor stand only activate the freezing of water on world relog. So thanks Mime for showing me this, but there are some pretty neat things we can do with this, including a stasis detector, like a stasis chamber to detect a relog, or nether portal loading. So whenever an entity or item goes through a nether portal, it loads a 3x3 three three area. And so we can kind of apply this principle, putting a portal in every single chunk, to load another area in the world every time we relog, which wouldn't normally happen. And so this is most useful, I use this in blazing caves for the warden switch, so... It's a toggle that basically disables warden spawning, but it needs to be loaded with another chunk loader. So what a relog detector would do is it send the signal all the way over. So on relog, it powers this again and the, uh, the switch works again. So say you're like 10,000 blocks away from spawn, you don't need to go back to activate it. And just to show how it works here, when we relog, you'll see it freezes and it goes through multiple stages of defreezing. And so each of these would activate the observer, which is why we have a pulse extender here, which keeps this on for the whole time this is unfreezing. Alright, so it's pretty easy to build. But I'll quickly show over it in case you missed anything. God damn it. <laughs> Alright. So, observer. Looking at the water. You want an armor stand. Don't put on the boots. Put it on the armor stand. And this torch here is pretty important. So it actually loads while it defreezes. So we're going to put the repeater to 4 ticks. I don't know if it matters, but either way we want the pulse extended. And then just a quick little 4 repeaters here. And so this is going to extend the signal. So I guess uh, next on the list would be to show you how to do the stasis chamber. Which would hang your pearl. So from here, we go down 2 blocks. We place a dispenser up. And so we're going to put arrows here, then a lightweighted pressure plate here. And so this redstone line is going to go how many times you want to relog to activate the stasis chamber. So say we want it to happen twice, two arrow shoots, and then it will unload the chamber. And then just build a basic stasis chamber here. I think I need to go down one more block. I never know. Yep. Get me out of here. And now this stasis chamber is good to go. And so you'll see if we re-log here. One arrow shoots out. And if we want the thing to activate again, we need to wait for the redstone to be off, which is about 10 to 15 seconds. And then next time we relog, it could be in anywhere in the world. As long as we're in the overworld, we could be 2,000 blocks out. Hell, I'll, uh, I'll even do that. Let's go all the way over here and I'll relog. And voila, it activated because there were two arrow shots. So arrows despawn in a minute. So if you're not intending to teleport home, you need to wait a minute before disconnecting again. All right, and so for the last part here, I'll show you all the nether portal stuff. And so for the basic part of it, we'll replace this uh, smooth stone here, put it with a dropper. And we're just going to want to put a bunch of dummy items in this dropper. 
I really like iron because you can farm it easily and it compresses in all these uh, nuggets. Just build a simple portal here. And before we go through, we're going to want to test what direction the items go. So we'll shoot it in the way the dropper is facing. And so it goes this way. So I'll put a hopper this way. Some blocks reading it. Alright. And so we're going to want this basically. And so every time an item is shot through, it sends a pulse. I, I guess for the sake of compactness, I'll just move this over a bit. So we can go all the way over there pretty easily. But yeah. And so it's very expandable from here, because you only need to shoot an item through every time. So just a bunch of the materials you already know about. And so every chunk you're going to want another portal. So, I'll put chunk orders on with F3 and G. You always want to make sure that um, repeater is... Um, I, I think the redstone strength is 15. So it works out just enough, but always make sure that your line is going to be going the full way. So we build another portal here, and we put a dropper facing into it. Whoops. Probably should not have lit the portal. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing where iron nuggets go in here. Just fill that boy up to the full. And we can do the same thing here. Block, dropper, portal. And then maybe every other portal you're gonna want to make through like go through just so like the items can uh you see the item goes through because it doesn't have anywhere to go we just want to load this in the overworld side and we're gonna want to do this for every portal so they all have a place to throw an item into and hence load the chunks through and so it'd be the pretty, pretty similar thing. Every chunk, you're going to want to do the same thing. Bam, bam. I'm not going to build the portal here because you kind of get it. Just make sure there's always a redstone signal. And it would go to here and then you'd throw another item in and it would start boot up this nether chunk loader. And so this is essentially the gist of the things you can and should do with um with this uh with this sort of stuff with the relog detection i think it's a really powerful tool and pretty unexplored until now but if you guys have any ideas of things to do with this as well these are only two uses for potential relog detection and also if you want me to do more sort of tutorials on this kind of stuff i uh I want to do a bunch more videos on uh, some of the blaze and cave strategies I've been using for my speedrun. And uh, I'll see you guys later.